Last year, the top 16 started with a three-way tie for the Week 1 MVP between Dior Fisher, Lior Eliahu, and Nikola Pekovic. This year, more the same as Ramuna Siskauskas, Fernando San Emeterio, and Robertus Yavtokas split the MVP with a ranking of 29. Find out which one of their teams did not pick up the win when EuroLeague Adventures TV returns after a brief message from some of our sponsors. All right, we're back, and let's get the ball rolling with B.C. Kimke versus Sabona. One of those three-headed MVPs was Robertus Yavtokas, and he was rewarded with that because he had a baller-ass game. 29 minutes, 17 points, and 9 rebounds for the big tattooed Lithuanian with the crew cut. And um, he was really just getting everything he wanted. Nine of those boards, out of those nine boards, six of them were offensive. So he was hitting the glass hard. And if BC Kimke can play with this kind of toughness, I like them as not saying they're going to get there, but they have the makeup to get to the Final Four. They have the kind of team that can win in a five-game playoff. That's assuming they advance, which is far from an assumption. I'm not even sure if, if they're going to do that. But this was certainly a big win over Sabona. Um, who did not play an altogether terrible game. Marco Tomas really lit it up. 17 points, a 22 ranking for him. He's clearly the go-to guy, best player on the floor for them. Not only did he lead their team in points with 17, but also in rebounding with 6. Um, but he will have to get a little bit of help if they want to win looking forward. So the big win, 83-70, to Kimki over Sabona. Next, we look at Aseko Procom, who's kind of my surprise pick to advance over Unicaja. I don't like the direction Unicaja is going. I like what Aseko is doing, especially since the addition of big man Rock Covarda. They go out and get the victory um, at home, 89-65 to over Zalgiris, who has had traditionally the past couple years struggled on the road. They got a road win to get into the Final Four. Couldn't do it two weeks in a row. Um, so for Zalgiris, who is... Give them their props. Still undefeated atop the, the Lithuanian League. They had a little bit of trouble against Poland, the Polish squad. And that is because five guys for Seko Procom had rankings of 10 or higher. Here's the, sh the shocker out of that. Quinta Woods, not one of those guys. I repeat, <coughs> I repeat, not one of those guys. Uh, he scored six points in 15 minutes for a ranking of nine. Uh, Jan Yagla had a rank of negative two. Bad news, those guys didn't get involved. Good news, a Seco Procom can still pull off the huge 24-point win even with those shortcomings from their big guns. Um, for Zalgiris, the bright spots, uh, definitely not three-point shooting where they were 5 of 29. Uh, Seco forced them into some bad shots and uh, some, er, some bad threes early in the shot clock, especially in the second half after getting up a big lead. Bright spot for Zalgiris was Mario Delos. The uh, you know a week after his 20th birthday comes on his Euroleague debut plays 20 minutes get, gets 14 points for a uh, second leading team high ranking of 16 down to Shalinga with 18 the leader there so Seco wins Regal Barcelona stays perfect at 79 to 69 they win at home uh, Zavi Pasquale's bunch beats Marusi who did play. A, a decent game, better second half than first half. They got down early, and I don't think anyone expected this to be close. So all in all, 10-point margin against the best team in um, in Europe right now is surely nothing to uh, scoff at for the boys from Marusi. Um, Rubio, bad news there. He continues to play either up or down to his competition. You see him just winning the week MVP with a 33 ranking against the much better Montepaschi, but against the lesser opponents, he doesn't really play with that fire, doesn't really attack, and ends up with only three points and one assist, three turnovers for a negative two ranking. So, you know, maybe this means that Rubio, when it comes Final Four time, which Barcelona will be playing in, he'll step it up. Uh, I expect that. But all in all, they get the win. Big game for Juan Carlos Navarro, 17 points. He led the way for the boys in red and blue as they stay perfect. Big game. I was looking forward to this one more than anything. Caja Laboral playing at home against Olympiacos after losing that heartbreaker against Chiska. 
in week 10 after a Sean Singletary 3 went wanting. They stay home and let the big dogs, Olympiacos, come into town, and they just did what they always do. They score points, 89 this week for Olympiacos. Caja did put up 85 of their own, uh, kept it close. Big swing, you know, championship teams, what do they do? They finish quarter strong. Olympiacos finished the third very, very strong. Down five uh, with about a minute left in the third quarter, and they come storming back, capitalized by a brilliant old-school pick-and-roll by Theo Papalukas and Nikola Vujicic as time expired in the third quarter to put them up to uh, say what you will about Papa Lucas and the aging Vujicic. Their roles, obviously, uh, on this team, a little bit more limited in their old age, but they can still run the hell out of some pick and roll. Straight out of a clinic video, beautifully done, um, beautifully executed, and that's why I like them to win it all still over Regal Barcelona. They're my pick, might as well stick with them. They got the experience and they got the wisdom to make it happen. Um, big days from Olympiacos for what I would call really um, their big three if you got to pick somebody at every position because Ionis Barus has gotten to the mix with 18. Childress had 21 points and Linus Kleza had 18 points, proving that I still think he's the most complete scorer in the EuroLeague and kill you from anywhere. Barus is also throwing in 11 rebounds. And another big game from T. Dosic, 14 points for him. Um, hit all of his all of his buckets from inside the three-point line, one of five from outside, six assists, only one turnover, looking a lot more heady, playing a lot smarter, playing within himself, within Coach uh, Paniotis Yunakis' system. So uh, well done, young Milos. Now if we can just get you a razor. Montepaschi Maccabi in another great game, highly anticipated by at least me. I mean, I'm hoping y'all were looking forward to this one too. Um, playing in Siena and Maccabi, I thought they were they were going to come in here and win. They've been looking better. Uh, there's more room to work down inside ever since they let Lampe go. He was great, but he wasn't working. So I thought, look, Dior Fisher and Stefan Lazmi are going to come into this game for Maccabi. Not this game, the rest of the season. And we're going to see why Lazme was so great last year for Partizan and why Fisher was, you know, an all Euro League type performer last year uh, when he was healthy for Maccabi. But for some reason, and I got, I'm not in Pini Gershon's head, you know, and I bet there are a lot of profan profanities flying around that head, so maybe it's good that I'm not right now. But if I were, I would whisper this. Play Dior Fisher. Only played six minutes, um, didn't pick up a single foul. Laws may play 21, he did foul out. Not, not Pini's fault. But why do you have Yanev Green playing 12 minutes and Fisher only playing 6? I'm sorry. Let Yanev Green get his lights in the Israeli League if you need to. really need to keep him happy. But in these big games in the top 16, you need to keep him on the bench and give those minutes to Fisher. Because if you're going to play Bluthenthal all these minutes, he's not going to get in there and crash and give you the energy that you need. He's going to be posting, looking for a shot. Great game for Bluthenthal today. I thought he did a great job. But if you're going to use that lineup with Bluthenthal in there, you need some energy out of your fours and out of your fives. So, um, personally, I would love to see Fisher get some more minutes. Um, also, Wisniewski only played 17 minutes. Deron Perkins gets 28. Uh, I like that split. I like that backcourt, but I'd like to see those minutes a little bit more even. Um, you know, Andrew hadn't done anything to prove that he shouldn't be getting the most minutes, the bulk of the minutes at least, um, go coming into this game the, the entire season. So, for me, that's what I'd like to see, but... Uh, as I've stated previously, I don't make the rules. Uh, if I did, things would be a little different. Probably probably worse overall, so maybe it's a good thing I don't. But that's all I got today. Uh, Y'all keep hitting us back. If you've had some good reviews on the new site, the new look, keep on hitting me up. If you got any suggestions, freaknick at EuroLeagueAdventures.com. Check us out iTunes, Twitter, YouTube, Ustream, on the homepage. You know how we do it. My boy Slam's over in Madrid. I'll be over there soon. Until next time, we will see y'all. We got the Freak Nicks weekly wrap-up coming this weekend. Keep your eyes open for it. Peace, y'all.